I'm Dante. And hey, I'm Dana. And welcome to the Dante Show. Kwame, the man with the plan behind the stands. Before we get into it, do me a favor. If you are on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever, hit that share button so people can see what the fuss is all about. Don't worry if it's the end of the show. They can catch the replay. We're trying to spread the love instead of spreading the lies, y'all. All right, let's get into it. Did you know that our boy Dante Morrison is a best-selling author? Do you like smut? Yes, smut. Well, these books are filled with it. Check out The End of the Rainbow, followed by the sequel, Yesterday Clarified. You can get them on Amazon, or if you are tired of giving Jeff Bezos the time of day, you can visit www.dantemorrison.com, where, in fact, you will find out more about the motivational, inspirational, hilarious host known as Dante, Mr. Morrison, if you're nasty. He is not only the host of TDS, he is a public health advocate, motivational speaker, and community change agent. Articles, interviews, blogs, podcasts, vlogs, and more. You name it, and Dante has done it. Speaking of vlogs, have you subscribed to the Dante Show YouTube? Now every villager should be subscribed. The more the channel grows, the bigger TDS messaging becomes. It's really simple. Go to www.youtube.com forward slash Dante Morrison. And also, did you want to be a guest on the Dante show? Or do you want to book Dante or Dana on your platform? Stop. Don't inbox him. Don't email him or even call him. You know what you need to do? Go ahead and open your handy dandy smartphone or Wi-Fi enabled device and send an email to info at pyromedianetwork.com and request your presence on the show. It's 2021, y'all, and Dante and Dana has got management. So, let's conduct business. Speaking of management, the Dante Show is produced by Pyromedia Network. We are a Black-owned digital marketing and video production agency helping businesses and brands make an impact with their message. We also help businesses navigate what we call the biggest communication shift in over 500 years, social media. So, if you have a business, brand, or influence, and you want to take it to the next level, contact us today. All right, y'all. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you on the next. Boom. What it do, everybody? Happy Monday. Welcome to another round of the Dante Show with your boy Dante Morrison here live in effect in the Hotel Casablanca with my phenomenal sidekick. What's your name, dog? Hey, it's me, lady. Hey, hey, lady, lady, lady. We just started the show. I know, I know all of this right here. Listen, ladies, hey. It's okay, ladies. It's okay. Hey, we, we started the show tonight. Hey, hey, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. We here tonight, ladies. It's on and cracking. Tell your people, tell everybody, your boys are in the building. Let's go. Did, did, your, did your crowd get bigger, dog? Yeah, they got, hey, more fans, man, more your fans. Your fan base is blowing up. Your fan blowing base up, baby. Up. Hey, I love it. I love it. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Yeah. Hey, how, how was your weekend? It was good, man. It was good. You know what I'm saying? Got to chill a little bit. Um, it was actually nice this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Watched the cars, relaxed, ate, 
and chill. Relax some more. I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, so look, so let's start with some pop culture real quick. Some let's go. Culture. Let's go. I'm not sure if you caught the verses on yesterday between SWV and Escape, you know, but I caught like the first, I would say, 30 minutes of it because it took a half hour for it to get started. Uh -huh. It was all cool having a half hour worth the DJ music and all that kind of stuff. But I'm like, yo, when 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 the girls gonna come out? When the right, right, right. <laughs> and I was on the freeway driving, thinking I'm gonna drive and listen to the verses, you know. So if you did not get a chance to watch the SWV and Escape verses, it was fire. The, the the part that I got to hear, I loved it. You know, I think that it was wonderfully done. They were singing live. They had their tracks. I mean, it was good. They came out. They looked phenomenal. Yes. Like phenomenal. And, and unlike a lot of verses in the past, it was it was cool. It was really interactive. The stage was set. And I'm an I'm a SWV fanatic. Like I love SWV, but Escape kind of recaptured me, you know, on yes. I'm like, okay, Escape, Escape, do it too. You know, right. and have them singing live. I think that's what I love the most because I think about the songs that we have out now. Some of the artists that are out now, it's like how are these artists? How, how are these artists going to sound singing these songs? You know, 20, 30 years from now. Right. You know, SWV came out in, I think, 92, 93. I was in the military. That first album dropped. I'm like, yo, this is fire. 30 years later, I'm like, this song is still fire. But some of the lyrics that we hear today, they're, they're trendy lyrics. So they only apply, like, right now. You know? The only, you know what I didn't like, man? I didn't like, what I still don't like is all of those hits SWV had, and they've never won an award. Yeah. I, that's yeah. the part that that pisses me off is like these ladies had hit after hit after hit after hit after hit yeah. and it's like they have won nothing yeah yeah real talk real talk just the lady of soul you know joint they, they just got, got yeah yeah and i was there when they won that one that was a few <laughs> years ago so right but but i think that i, I want to ask the ask the squad you know um village listen if you watched it yesterday what did you think about it did you like it and it's not about a it what and i loved how they opened up and said this is not a versus right you know we just it's it's a healthy you know competition or whatever we highlight in our era cuz it really does make a difference so both these art groups you know, gave me what I needed on yesterday. So hopefully right. you have to check it out. If you didn't check it out, go to YouTube and check it out. All right. Check it out. It was amazing. It was amazing. And then they, you know, like you said, um somebody was throwing shade, but we ain't gonna say whose name it was. That's what happened. Yeah. Our next topic, our next topic is what is it Kwame? I forgot just that quick. Yeah, listen. So yesterday, DJ Cassidy did a pass the mic. You know, Mother's Day edition. I don't know if you saw it or not. You know, the the highlight for me was Shirley Jones of the Jones Girls. You know, when she sung Who Can I Run To? Who right. Can I Run To? Woo! Listen, when the song started playing, I said, watch every single Escape fan who doesn't really like go backwards. They're going to think this lady's singing an Escape song. Nah, Shirley Jones sang Who Can I Run To in the original key. <laughs> sitting down and we're just sitting there just chirping. I said, Shirley is still a bird. Shirley Jones rocked it. So you can go to BET.com and you can check out DJ Cassidy's Pass the Mic, Mother's Day edition from last night. But you really got to see Shirley Jones. And also, honorable mention goes to Al B. Sure. Al B. Sure, son, night and day, an uh, octave lower than the original. I can you tell know. you how but, I feel about But the way he sung it, the way he sung it, it's like okay, Al B. Sure could release that song right now in that key, and it was it was sell because his voice was cool. It was really really cool. Everybody stayed. They had Payla Bell, Gladys Knight, you know, all these legends. They stayed and they uh -huh. laughed. They didn't try to overdo it. But to me, the winner last night, Shirley Jones. Yeah, Shirley Jones killed it. Killed it. All right, that 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 that's me. Did you get to see it, Dana? I heard snippets of her, but. Uh, Mother was going in. Yeah, she did that. So, so you get out, get out yeah, you youngsters, check out the Pastor Mike uh, Mother's Day edition DJ Cassidy. All right. All right, see, I know the Dante show is all about being black. We black every day, all day, 365, 24 hours a day. We black, blickly black, black on top of black. We black, black, black. We love being black.
period. With that being said, we realize that Black History Month goes beyond February. We should be Black 365. So with that being said, every episode of the Dante Show, we highlight a Black icon, living or deceased, to just keep us alive, keep our stories alive, and today is no different. So y'all ready for the Dante Show Black History Spotlight? Kwame, let's do this. Let's do it. Who we got today? Who we got today? Y'all ain't ready. Uh-oh, the legend, Sydney Poitier. Sydney Poitier, uh, uh, a Bahamian American actor, director, and producer who broke the color barrier in the U.S. motion picture industry by becoming the first African-American actor to win an Academy Award for Best Actor for the movie Lilies of the Field. All right. He grew up on Cat Island in the Bahamas and returned as a teenager to the United States where he enlisted in the U.S. Army during World War II and served a brief stint in a medical unit. Upon his discharge, he applied to the American Negro Theater in New York City, but was refused a place because of his accent. Imagine wow. that. All right. He practiced American enunciation while listening to the accents of radio voices and reapplied to the American Negro Theater six months later. Clearly, he got in. Poitier made history as Homer Smith, an ex-GI who helps nuns build a chapel in Lilies of the Field. His Academy Award win marked the first time a competitive Oscar had been awarded to an African-American male. Dante Show Village, who was the first Black actor to win an Academy Award? Go ahead and put that in the comment section. Let's see if y'all up on y'all movie theater history, all right? Put in the comment section. A brilliant dramatic actor, he also had a comedic side. The comedy Uptown Saturday Night in 1974 was an enormous hit thanks to the chemistry between Portier and co-stars Bill Cosby and Harry Belafonte. Portier then retained with Cosby on Let's Do It Again and a piece of the action. In 2001, Portier, the recipient of many prestigious acting awards, was presented with an honorary Academy Award for his remarkable accomplishments as an artist and as a human being. Hey. But a dual citizen of the United States and the Bahamas, he served as ambassador to Japan for the Bahamas from 1997 to 2007. And in 2009, he was awarded the U.S. Presidential Medal of Freedom. All right. Y'all know by who. Come on Freedom. now. Village. Give it up for icon and living legend, Sidney Poitier. Give hey. it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Yes, y'all got it right. Hattie McDaniel. Hattie McDaniel was the first African-American or Black actor to win an Academy Award. Thing about Hattie McDaniel, she wasn't even allowed to enter into and sit in the theater during the award ceremony. She had to sit outside, and when they called her name, she could walk up on stage, get it, and then have to leave. So we've been through a lot, y'all. We've been through a lot, but we had greats like Hattie McDaniel and Sidney Poitier to break barriers and push through and make spaces at the table for us. And I did have the pleasure and honor of meeting Sidney Poitier one time. And he is larger than life. I didn't have any words to say except hi, because I didn't believe that I was like really looking at Sidney Poitier and that was all I can get out. Hi, he, hello, and that was it. <laughs> oh, that was it. So y'all listen, that's oh, our Dante. That's our History Month highlight, the incomparable Sydney Poitier. And this is when I disappear and I give my boy Dana Dane time to shine because it's time for the what? It's time for the Dana drop, ladies. Let's go. Boom. Boom. What is good, beautiful people? I pray that everyone is in good spirits and good health during this time. Please, as Dante said earlier, go and subscribe to our show here on YouTube, www.youtube.com backslash Dante Morrison. Let's go. We got to get our numbers up. Go over there. Click the subscribe button. Tell a friend. Tell a loved one. Tell a cousin. Tell somebody that these two fellas is on Mondays and Tuesdays, 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Tonight, I'm going to hit you with some nuggets. We're going to talk about your silence. Speak up even when you think you shouldn't. Speak up even if you think you shouldn't. 
Silence is deemed as approval. You may think by staying silent, it keeps you from being involved in any conflict or any disputes. Silence is much as an active form of communication as talking. Anytime you are involved in a situation, people are aware of all the input and lack of it. If you disapprove and don't say anything, it will not make it seem easy by just being silent. If the problem persists and you did nothing, people may consider you as an enabler or enabling the situation and think the issue is much your fault as the person who actually caused the problem. You may destroy trust, create resentment. So speak up, even when you don't think you need to. Speak up. The greater good shall be the priority. Speak up. Demonstrate that you are invested while you're in a conversation the first place. Why are you in the conversation in the first place? Why? Someone invited you to this conversation. Someone invited you to this dynamic. If you truly don't have a stake, then find a better use of your time. But if you're there for a reason, you need to show your commitment to the process and speak up. The people involved are being active and vocal. And if you're quiet and silent, why are you there? Why are you the conversation? No one else may know. You can't assume the obvious is obvious. <laughs> your experience and knowledge has value and given, give your, give your voice. In any given situation, you have experience in something people may not know. No one else has your unique perspective. That doesn't mean that everything in your brain is worth communicating, but with a little discretion and thought, you should be able to bring value to most situations. Think about it. Speak up even when you think you don't need to. You may not be alone in your thinking. It's entirely possible that your insight and the thoughts that you may have may be on the mind of others. But if you don't say anything, others may share your thoughts and opinions to, uh, to, with somewhere else. And then it may be something that you want to go back and forth with them in or disagree or agree. But how can they know if you don't say anything? By speaking your mind, you encourage them to voice their opinions and vice versa. If everyone holds back, the bus may silently be driving off of the cliff. So speak up, say something. Silence can also be a part of communication. I didn't know that until today. I educated myself. Sometimes when I go into certain situations, I may know all the answers. I may know or have some type of input, but I don't say anything because I'm like, well, you know, they may not value my opinion. They may not take what I have to say seriously or think, oh, who is this guy? He doesn't know anything, you know, whatever. But sometimes you have to speak up. You have to let your voice be heard because you may change the situation. You may change the narrative and the dynamic of whatever situation that's in. So speak up, even if you feel you don't need to. Speak up. And if you don't think you need to speak up, my boy can tell you that you need to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. Speak up. That's the Dana drop. And I'm out. Peace. Good drop, dog, as usual. Good drop, good drop, good drop. All right, let's get into it, family. Let's get into it. So tonight we have a special, we have three special guests that are joining us to just talk about the release of their new series called Trace, all right? So Trace basically is an adaptation, adaptation <laughs> of the unsolved murders of the serial killer, the doodler. That sounds a little fishy. Back in the 1970s, I think it was up in the Bay Area. Yeah, this series touches on mental health, identity, and the lack of support from families and friends when an individual is in need. You know, I love me a good um, good scripted series. I love me a good topic. And I also love me a good crime story. So I think I think Trace has all of those rolled into one. And with that being said, tonight's guests are Eugenia Washington, Spencer Collins, and Anthony Vaughn. And they're going to come on and talk about Trace, let's know what it's all about. Let's talk more about this doula cat. What's with the doula? Drawing sketches and whatnot, all right? But let's start off, ladies 
first. Ooh, ladies first. Ladies first. <laughs> so first up on the roster is the beautiful Eugenia Washington, who is playing, I don't know her role in this, but I saw the trailer and she's definitely in it. So Eugenia is a beauty of all beauties. I love black beauty. I love a black queen. And Eugenia is wearing the crown. So Village, hello welcome to Dante Show. The very first time, Eugenia Washington. Okay, I'm back. That was a great introduction. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here, you guys. You're welcome. You trust the process. We got you. We got you. Don't panic. <laughs> if this is an activated show. You guys got a lot going on with your memes and everything with the ladies. That's my oh favorite. yeah, the ladies are in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Eugenia, we are glad to have you here. So, for, Eugenia, what city are you in? First of all, I'm in Los Angeles. Where are you guys? Oh, we in LA. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in Lamert Park. I'm in Den I'm in Denmark. We just have the same we're in the same hotel lobby. <laughs> no, <Denmark. laughs> no, I'm in LA. Uh, I love Lemur Park. So I'm are you familiar with LA? Are you from here? I'm I'm a native, yeah. I'm from Palmdale. Okay, I'm from Carson. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah. You off, so the four, you off the 14, you that hour drive away, you know, one way in, one way out. <laughs> yes, the hour yes. drive one way in, one way out, definitely. Yep, but so not, but not to cut too much windy. But the way you said you were from Palmdale, you was like waiting for people to scream, though. The way you said it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Palmdale, and it was right. like. And no, uh, and I caught that, and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> so Eugenia, I mean, I, I I googled you and I researched you, and and I know who you is. I live for you and them strong cheekbones. There you go, sitting cover girl. I love it. So before you got involved in Trace, you know, what, what's been up? You know, how's your life been? What's been your journey to getting here? Oh, gosh. Um, well, first of all, COVID. So there's that. COVID really just put it into whatever anybody was doing. Um, but um, I've always been acting. I've always, I started on TV, right? So um, ever since I started, ever since I got off the top model, I you didn't mention that, so I'll mention that. Ever since I got off top model, I went directly into like modeling, acting, TV commercials. So I've always been in the industry. And it's interesting because I was just talking to another actor that was on Trace. And we were like, wow, back in like early 2000s, mid 2000s, why, you know, we didn't we immerse ourselves in acting more so? And I just remember like there weren't that many roles. You know, mm -hmm. there are very, very few roles for black actors and actresses. So um, it kind of feels like a lot of the actors and actresses just came from nowhere. But it's like we've been out here, we've been going and doing, but there literally just were no roles. Um, as of the last probably two or three years, we've come out. So mm -hmm. um, I've been doing my acting, definitely modeling. That That's my, my first thing is modeling. I've been doing that my whole entire career. Um, so I've been back and forth between here and New York, um, modeling, doing uh, a lot of beauty again, a lot of commercials, um, a couple of independent on-camera film or on-camera jobs, and um, I also created a skincare line. So what? Yeah, what? I skincare. <laughs> I did that over COVID. I was like, I'm at the house. What can I do? <laughs> hey, hey, that's how you do it. That's how a lot of people came up right now. Right, right. You take the opportunity. Huh? I said you took the opportunity during the pandemic to, you know, I mean, you home, you got time, let's branch out. Yes, yes. and um, this is something that I've been try I've been working on for about two or three years, but, you know, I've been busy with modeling and things just take you away. And then when COVID hit and everything stopped, and of course we couldn't go on set because that requires people to be in my face and touching me, literally, then right. that was just done. You know, so I was like, okay, so what is it that I love? Um, what am I passionate about? Where, where, where are my origins? And it's definitely in beauty and skincare. I've been doing makeup since I was like 14, since I discovered lipstick when I was nine. So I was like, let me get back to that. Like, literally, my mom is still mad about what happened to her lipstick. But I'm like, let me get back into that. And um, also, I am sort of a cannabis connoisseur. And I've discovered the 
uh, power of CBD and how it heals your skin. So I created a, a CBD skincare line. It's called Faded Skincare. Oh, so Faded Skincare. Yeah. <laughs> I like Faded. that. Faded? I like okay. That. You so what is it? it? So, so is it is it, a, is it a cosmetic line or is it more like cleansing and healthy skin? Like which which direction? Right. Is it? So um, I released one product that I formulated, um, mixed, created myself. It's it's um, modeled after my personal skincare regimen. I discovered the power of CBD about four years ago. Um, and so I've been using that on my skin ever since. So for me, I was kind of waiting for CBD to stop being a schedule one drug and for it to be FDA approved. And so as of the past, mm -hmm. I think 2019, 20, it's been available to be sold. So I, um, created a CBD oil. So it's called bioluminescence. It's CBD oil. It's Tamanu oil, a lavender and frankincense. And it's, um, I created it specifically for hyperpigmentation, so it gently fades your hyperpigmentation with your dark spots. Um, it also helps uh, with fine lines and wrinkles, and it brightens your skin tone. So it's an okay. oil that you use every day as a moisturizer. And, it's, and I, I'm assuming it's Unisex. Oh, yeah, it's Unisex. Everybody needs some CBD in their life, on their face. And I <laughs> All <love> day. <laughs> and I love a man who is big on self-care and um self-preservation and is just very gentle on himself and his skin because it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman i just feel like this is the body that you've been given and you really have to take care of that i love that i love it no i think that's great and i'm glad you took the opportunity during the pandemic to you know kind of hone in on that because clearly i think we open back up next month yeah. and i'm sure once we open and the nation opens you're gonna be back on them flights you're going to be back in front of the cameras, back on the runways and all that and kind of stuff. Street. You know, okay. listen, right. So you you <laughs> took that time to really boost your brand some more because, yes. um, yo, I, I love it. I love it. And oftentimes, you know, since you said, I don't want to say you're on America's Next Top Model because sometimes folks don't want to be known for that. I'm bigger I than that. Yeah. But you, you're, you know, you're an ANTM alum, you know, and, and from that, I just love how you are still – in the zone with it. You're not working at Wendy's. You know, you still modeling, walking the runway. Your skin is flawless. You got your own skincare line. And now you're in Trace. You're yeah. in a series. You're in Trace. So you you busy. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. you know. Um, definitely. I would like to thank God, my Lord and Savior, for uh <laughs> you feel me? Ooh, like listen. To to all day. <laughs> for um <laughs> oh no! Oh yes, thank you. Hey, we'll, here. we'll take a praise break. We'll, we'll take, take a praise break, break in a second. Know, that's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite memes. Okay, me and my friend be passing that meme back and forth. We and will take. Me. We will take a break. We'll buck in a minute. <laughs> We're gonna take a praise break. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Listen, because you know the longevity in this career is not very long. And when I was coming up, there wasn't they they did not accept black women like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me to thankfully be able to be in this industry, I'd say blessed to be able to be in this industry, and also thank God for choosing this path for me because I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, you know. Um, yeah. It's it's right. It's it's been uh it's been it, it's had its up and downs. It's been great. It's been mm -hmm. bad but it's been mm -hmm. any other industry and I'm just glad to be in it and actually living my dream um, and doing what I always knew I should be doing. So that's that. I love it. I love it. I get it. I get it. That's I good. It. That's good. Hey, so we gonna, we gonna bring on um, Anthony and Spencer after we take a quick break. We got a quick 30 second break. So y'all, y'all listen, you got, you got 30 seconds to go get your libation, get your CBD, whatever you gotta do. Do what you gotta do, and we come back. We gonna bring Go. back, we gonna bring Anthony Bond and Spencer Collins to do the second half of this talk. We gonna talk about the series Trace. So get ready, commercial. Let's go, Kwame.
Village. We are back. We are back for part two of our conversation about the scripted series Trace. With this, if you missed the last 15 minutes, you missed a phenomenal conversation with Eugenia Washington, who's talked about what she's been doing, her brand, and all that kind of stuff. But now we're going to pull on to the show Anthony Bond and Spencer Collins to talk about their role and what they did to bring Trace to the small screen. Bring them on in, my man. Let's go. Fellas, hey, what's going on? What it do? Welcome to the show, or welcome back to the show, Spencer. You a regular? Spencer, you a regular? I, Spencer, we interviewed you in person. Yes, right. Sir. What up, Dana Day? <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's go, let's go. So yo, so Trace is about the doodler. And you guys have basically flipped it and, and went deeper into the story and tapped into the human side of the experience. So who, whose idea was to tackle a serial killer? That was, it was my idea. I, um, it took me about two years to con- uh, conceptualize the idea. And what I, what I was having an issue with is that I was trying to figure out the best way to make sure that it um, comes to like in a really authentic way. And, um, and it's so funny because at the very last moment, right before we were going into production, Spencer literally came out of nowhere. Um, I, had, I had someone else that I was working with who I shall not name um because yeah so i had somebody else that i was working with that like at the last minute backed out and they also pulled out the talent that they were managing at that time and i immediately called spencer and i was just trying to figure out what what to do but anyway aside from that i'm sure we'll get into that later but i came up with the idea for trace Okay. All right. Did you did you already know about the Doodler? Or had you read about the story before you said this is gonna be a great series? Yes, I, I, I came I did my research on it first, um, with the idea of me trying to understand like what is this actually about. And I discovered that um it it, it was it, it it was at the same time as a zodiac killer. So mm-hmm. what can be confusing is that some people are, are they may be confused that the jeweler and the Zodiac killer may be the same exact person. Hold so, on a second. But, we, got a, we, got a, we got a glitch in here somewhere. Yeah, something's going on. Whose mic is it? So is it, is it you, Spencer? Is it you, Eugenia? It's Eugenia. I don't, I don't think it's mine. I think, I think it's Eugenia. Is it me? What, what am I doing? I think it's your mic. Your mic is um, clicking on something, or it might be um, just shaking. I don't know what's going on. But don't feel bad. It happens to the best of us. (laughs) (laughs) Don't feel feel bad. It happens. It happens. There's a uh, delay, for sure. Oh, okay. So that's part of your connection. So we're going to mute Eugenia and then bring her in as necessary. All right. All right. Go ahead, Anthony. Zodiac Killer. Yeah, so basically what I literally while I was in the middle of filming, I discovered that the Zodiac Killer and the Doodler took place at the same exact time. And I told Spencer, I said, oh, my God, what if all this research that I've done for the past two years, the Doodler is actually the Zodiac Killer? So it, 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 was, it was mind boggling as I was unfolding all of the information. And on top of that, all of the, the characters that were the victims were all um, Caucasian men. And mm-hmm. even the African American men, I just can't make all of them Caucasian. So, you know, I had, you know, I had to switch up and add a little flavor in there, uh, you know, to, for the different characters. So um, that was my biggest, that, that was, um, the casting process was the most difficult part. Okay. And I took, okay. And I told Spencer that when we were talking about it, when the other person had pulled out, I said, I need a Nubian queen to play yes. the lead of Detective Miller. I said, I do not, and I, there's no, I'm not shaming no skin tone, 
but I need a sister right. to play right. the character. Right. Yeah. I was and, really, really excited about that. Looking for the chocolate yeah. sister. They were, dude, can you imagine so many agencies were so shocked that we were actually looking for a brown skin girl. They they were shocked. They literally, what, Spencer, what did one lady tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm one not going to repeat was, it. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat it. Just know that our brown, uh, our brown skin sisters are not their top priority. They were trying to sell me everything else. Like get, they was giving me all kind of girls, and I'm like, no, 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 no. We we purposely want a dark skin, beautiful Nubian sister. And they're like, oh well, um, we have her. <laughs> like she's not she's not dark skin though. She likes right. we want dark skin. And then someone yeah. gave us Gina's picture, and we both fell in love. Was like. That's the one we want. That's it. Yeah, we was like, we want not looking no more. We want her. And I think that's exactly. that's great that you did that because I watched um, Without Remorse over the weekend, the new Michael B. Jordan film on uh, yes. Amazon. Oh Prime. yeah, yeah. And to see, you know, the the girl that played Queen in Queen and Slim, you know, being one of the lead actors in there, and she had the shortcut the whole night. And to me, she was beautiful in Queen and Slim. Yeah. You know, yeah. She's beautiful, and then in this one, she's beautiful, but she was playing, you know, she was playing a, a raw she was tough. Like, I'm yeah. about it, but she's just yeah. beautiful. And I think to have that kind of um that kind of imagery is important and is necessary because the yeah. shades of black are so broad, but yes. we do get kind of boxed into the, the Lauren Londons who is gorgeous, but yeah. it's like we always see a Lauren London. You you watch Power and you see in, you know, Lala and, and all of that, but sometimes you want to see the other shades of brown because those those girls, they pull too. You know, oh, they, they do. Pull, they snatch they it. Push, they, get they, push the other, they push the other shades on us. I mean, like like he was just saying, we, we went looking for dark skin and they were just, it, it's like they were stuck like he he wants a black girl? Right. Like, yes, that's what we want. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Sharon. Jody Turner Smith. Yes, Jody Turner Smith. Beautiful, yes. beautiful yeah. queen. She is gorgeous to me. But I love yes. this. I love this. So, Eugenia, how did you feel when you got the call? You know, because I know that you said earlier when I was interviewing you that there's there was just not a lot of work, you know, and we all know that Hollywood is, is does have a colorism issue. You know, yeah. but to know that, that you were you got the role because you are a beautiful chocolate sister, how did that make you feel? Uh -oh, or not? I think she, I she to be unmuted. I was like, Am I back? <laughs> She's waiting to <laughs> I can't you see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna tell you this. Throughout my whole career, I've been passed over, you know, and so I appreciate the fact that we are in season right now. And so, um, I'm gonna take advantage of myself being seen finally and being in season, and it's always so. Um, I can't think of the world word except heartwarming when someone is actually looking for me. Um, mm -hmm. so I was excited to play this, you know. And side note, Joey is a good friend of mine, I love her, so so happy and so excited for her. Well, tell her I love her too, Lena. I love her, yes, yeah, she, she's but a cute queen. I, but the only thing that I will say, I know um, Eugenia got tired of me telling her this, that every time between the tape, I would look at the footage. I was like, girl, you are so motherfucking stunning on this camera right now that you are getting on my nerves. Yeah. You are so good on this camera. You're getting on my nerves. Because I cannot take her. Yes, I can not take my eyes off of her. And shout out to Jason. Shout out to Jason Patrick who did her 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 wig for the show. It was like she she looked amazing like throughout the entire show. I was so I was so happy cuz they was able to bring my vision to life of how I wanted that character to play out.
I love it. I love it. So Anthony and Spencer, you two are creatives that I know personally, and I know you have a lot of content that is out there and you try to bring stuff that's different, refreshing, and also reflective of certain communities. You know, how challenging has it been? You know, because right now it seems like we're oversaturated with stuff. If you go to YouTube, you're seeing a new series. If you go to Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, Disney, Epics, I don't care who it is, everything is is just all this stuff. And sometimes it seems like it can be difficult to create something that's original. Right, right. You know, so how question. do you, how do you tap into it to say, okay, well, let's do something that has not been done because there's so much cookie cutter content that is out there right now. This is true. You want to go? You want to go first? You want to go first, Spencer? Um, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to stay in the safe zone because Dante knows I I and, and as you know me now. And you got that I, mouth. My mouth will get me in trouble. Da, Dante knows me, I, so I've been saying a little too much. I, I'll I'll just say. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. Go ahead. Okay. Nice. Okay. Well, I, I will say that um, I think this is the first time out of anything that I've ever done that I actually found another individual who gets what I want to do, who understands what I'm trying to do. It's been pl- many, many years, many, many head bumps, me falling, me, uh, well, failing, according to some folks, failing, but um, I've, just, I've never met another person that I'm able to have a raw, um, when I say a raw, candid conversation with about not only the industry and about the, the trajectory of what we want to project for our community. Because I that's where I think where people are seeming to drop the ball. They're not they're not creating stuff for our community. They're creating things for a dollar. They're creating things for what they think that people would want. And Spencer and I, we are artists in two in two different lanes. He has a lot of work in theater and then yes. I we I, I do a lot in film. So when you combine the two of those together magic it's it's yeah, it's crazy magic. like the the last just i mean just the last film that we just worked on velvet jesus mm. that's with jensen atwood and, and ernest um Hardy 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 Jr. Jr. yeah yeah that is going to be phenomenal but and that's yeah go ahead at no end, what i was going to say sometimes you know you can be in your career and you can feel like you know even with me and my writing and stuff like that it's like you can be doing this for years, 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 and never find that click with that person. And then as soon as you're getting ready to say, okay, I'm done with this, I'm whatever, that person comes into your life and they're so genuine. And the stuff and the 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 product that you put out, you just be like, man, where have you been? Oh but my see, God, I say that all the time. <laughs> but the thing about it is it wasn't supposed to happen then. God had to take you through what he had to take you through to get you to what he needed to get you to. So therefore, you had to go through the doors being closed. You had to go through the, Anthony, your stuff's not good enough. Or Anthony, your stuff is weak. And and Spencer, you know, you don't really got it, but give me that one more thing. And we always try to do it by ourselves. And when we finally get out of the way of trying to do it ourselves, he'll come in and say, boop, there's the person right there. It could be yes. 10, 15 years yes, from God, now, God. and that person will drop right out of the sky and land in front of you, and you'll be like, where have you been? I wasn't supposed to meet you 10 years ago. I wasn't supposed to meet you five years ago because you probably wouldn't be able to handle all the blessings that you would have gotten then. So now you're prepared. Your skin is tough. You can handle everything that's getting ready to come to y'all. All three of y'all, I see great things happening. And now you're prepared mentally, physically, ready to be prepared for the doors that's about to fly open. When yeah. I say Eugenia wow. is sitting, <laughs> I'm sitting. <laughs> She's a statue. She's a statue. I'm like, Eugenia, I didn't hear nothing Dana said because I got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? 
proper posture. You, just you, know, right. you, you see what I'm talking you about? You the whole show just sitting there saying nothing. She <laughs> said, "I'm back." I got a piece of tape over her picture. I'm talking to y'all for her. <laughs> no, I love you but, that's, Thank you. but that's the thing that I, I that me and Spencer when we talked about them, we were looking back at the footage of Trace, the way that Eugenia and and Gary their chemistry um, in, in the show and the way that they they um they the characters it was so like for me it was spot on it was everything that we could have um, wanted yes there were a lot. Of hiccups oh, <laughs> along the way. <laughs> so many hiccups. And most, that's mainly most of them related to COVID. Yes, <laughs> a lot of them, a lot of them were la- related to COVID. And and Trace was Trace uh, was a union show. So we literally, Dante, we had union reps that would pop up to our set to like monitor everything that we were doing. It was just um I think I think no no I I understand but I think I think the difference is is that we were following every single protocol that they had outlined at a hundred and sixty nine page pamphlet. (laughs) I know right. (laughs) So I'm like we was following every protocol, and then the fact of the matter is that me and we we felt targeted because we were a smaller production. We were, and I don't think let's not. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, and I and I and I don't think that a lot of people talk about that. And and me and Spencer said, no, we're going to talk about it because the trouble that we went through. Eugenia was there. It was just to it finish was the a, project. It was a. You got shut down three times. You got shut down three times. Three times. Three times. So let me. Let me ask you this, Dana. Dana just dropped a spiritual word. Hopefully, that deposited into your spirit. Um, I can tell when Dana goes there because then I back and let him just talk. But what has really, in the midst of all that's going on, because all three of you are successful in your own right. You know, all three of you are. You have your name. You, you have your brand. You, you're doing it. You're doing mm-hmm. it. And and before you got to this point, I'm sure all three of you at some point in time stopped and said, Lord, why am I doing this? Or or why do I keep going? Or what's the point? What has been your biggest push not to give up? Dante, you know you are one of my biggest pushes not to give up. You've been somebody who has championed me through so much when people was talking trash. I can I say shit when people was talking shit about me, saying that, you know, I'm a one-trick pony. I talk about the same thing over and over again. Yes, I did because we weren't having the conversation and our numbers were still growing. So, yeah, I was talking about a lot of things in the community that we talked about, but nobody wasn't doing anything about it. Um, so, yeah, you you were one of my biggest driving forces. Um, the other thing is watching people like Anthony Bond before I got a chance to meet him, I was already a a huge um, fan of his work. You know, I had been following him for a long time. uh, And and I told him this. I've been following him for a long time. I would show up to his premieres and I would make sure that I would download the apps and watch whatever it is that he created because the content was real. It wasn't fluff. It was about real things that that we were really experiencing. You get tired of the fluff after a while. Um, and I'm one of those people who, if, if we're going to have a conversation, let's have a real dirty, gritty conversation. Let's not, let's not beat around the bush. This is what's happening. This is how we can fix it. Period. I love it. And can I just say one thing? Oh, what I learned during you. this production, um, in, there, there was a season in my life where if things didn't happen and not instantly but you know if I gave it one or two tries and it just didn't happen I would like give up and move to the next thing um and this production really showed me that things that you really want take a lot of um a lot of time and effort and just seeing how Anthony and Spencer like through all of the shutdowns through all of like everything we went through um kept pushing forward And we were able to get it done and to see like the final project. And it looks so great. Like 
we were turning tricks out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> we was really. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you are not we really was. <laughs> we, had a a trip. On. we was turning <laughs> tricks out there. So, okay. I mean, it just taught me, like, man, everything, so, things that are worth it take a lot of time and effort, a lot of effort, and you really just have to put your energy behind it, and it's going to come out great. And I am just so happy at the way it came out. It looks great. I'm excited. It's my first leading role in a project. And um, I just want to say thank you, Anthony and Spencer, for teaching me that inadvertently, that regardless of what things are going to work out, you just have to keep moving forward. Yep. Thank Aww. you for that. Yeah. Well, first of all, First of yeah. all, I would just like to say, and I and I told Eugenia this several times, you can't even understand how on on how you saved you alone saved oh, this whole entire show. Yeah. You <laughs> alone saved the whole entire show because if you didn't come on board, the show probably wouldn't have never happened. And I'm just being one hundred percent honest. So the fact that you stayed in there through all of the trials and tribulations is a testament within itself. <laughs> and but and for me, Spencer knows this, Dante knows this as well. I'm not a stranger to adversity. Um, I've already been through a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm and and literally I don't I don't have any harsh feelings to anybody because those are those are times that help me help teach me to be a better person, help teach me to do business better. Because I, uh, for in the beginning of, of this whole process, I relied on too many other other individuals to do business. And my biggest driving force to help me not to, help me not to stop my husband. He is the one that has like, he's the one that tells me that you need to sit your ass down you need to do better. <laughs> Spencer, no, he he uh -huh. he's the one that's always chewing me out, but he always there to support me and give me like the 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 guidance to, to move forward. So that's the that's he's the only person that has not allowed me to stop. Yeah. Even though when he okay. even though when he tell me to, even though when he tell me to stop. I <laughs> I love it. Hey, so listen, we have been hearing about about this movie, this movie, this movie, this movie. We've heard all your talks. We've seen all your tears. But the people are like, well, what is it about? So we're going to play this clip. Yeah, we're going to come on back and close it out. So Kwame, yeah, whenever okay. you're ready, let's go. What makes a serial killer kill? How can you justify an act that is deemed so heinous by society, yet could also be glorified by others? Is this that doodler? The one in the newspaper article. First, Black Lives Matter. Now this. Breaking news. 30-year-old Jill Cannon was found dead in an alley outside the B12 lounge on the Upper West Side. Police are seeking answers. Oh. Are you playing detective now? <sighs> no, I just... You're trying to solve my husband's murder when you're probably the reason he's dead. What? Okay, great. Just get the hell out of here and leave me alone. Gary, wait. Well, Mr. Stevens, I can assist you, but I have one requirement. Hey, Miller. Yeah, look, look. You and Williams need to get back down to the police station pronto. 
Captain, sources say that drawings of the victims were located near the crime scene. Are those sources correct? I can confirm that we have in evidence what would appear to be rough sketches of our victims. At this time, we are using all of our resources to obtain DNA and fingerprint analysis that can trace back to the killer. What the fuck is going on? Stop right there, put your hands up! Don't move! No, no, no! to watch Trace, tell them how to watch it, how to access it, all that kind of stuff. You got 20 seconds, go. You can watch Trace on www.watchvim.com. You can also download our mobile apps, watch them on iOS and Android devices. And that's I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Hey, Village. Hey, so check out Trace via the methods that Anthony shared. Also, give it up for Anthony Barnes, Spencer Collins, and Eugenia Washington, um, the stars, directors, producers, stagehands, grips, lighting technicians, sound engineers, casting directors, clothes, makeup, hair, all that kind of stuff for Trace. For Trace. So check it out and support them. Support them. Hey, y'all, thanks for being guests on the show. I'm going to subscribe. You. I'm going to watch it. Eugenia, thank you so much. It's our first time meeting, but I hope to see you again soon. Of course. No problem. No problem. Okay, thank you. Celebrate. Calm down in the building. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, everybody. And Spencer, you know I love you. Anthony, I love you. So y'all, thank you so much. And I'm wishing you nothing but the best with this new project. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, y'all. Take care. Congratulations. Right. Peace. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take us out, Dana. Take us out. Hey, hey. Yes, yes. Hey, check it out. Ladies, ladies, ladies. Let me calm down, calm down, calm down. I'm going to be with you in this. Hey, I'll be right over there. Shut up. They're going to pay the fine if we go over 9 o'clock. So listen. <laughs> hey, check this out. Follow me on Instagram at DNA716. You'll find out all the content I got going on on music, little funny memes and stuff I put there. You know, man, follow your boy, follow your boy. But before we get out of here, you know what you got to do? You got to spread love. Instead of spreading lies. You got to spread love. Instead of spreading lies. That sound good in that hotel hallway. You sound good, boy. Hey, we love y'all. Check on somebody in case, even if you think they're doing good. Remember, this uh, COVID is not over. Even if you got your vaccine, you're still not Superman or Superwoman. Chill. Keep your mask on. Keep distance. Hey, that's all I got to say. We love y'all. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Dante underscore Morrison, Dante underscore Morrison on Instagram. Check out my website, DanteMorrison.com. And please subscribe to The Dante Show on YouTube.com backslash Dante Morrison. Village, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Thank you for rocking with us through the highs and the lows, through the pandemic and non-pandemic. If it wasn't for you, we'd be two dudes just having a conversation. So we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We will see y'all tomorrow for another round of Who You Got? Who You Got? We doing who you got? <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. And I'm telling you, this edition is going to be lit. You do Ready. Tomorrow's episode of Who You Got. Like Dana said, please continue to wear your mask. 
If you're vaccinated, please still get tested. Please be safe. If we're going to get to herd immunity, we all got to work together. The vaccinated and the non-vaccinated got to do our part. All right. So we love y'all. We will see y'all later. Take care and God bless. Hey, Sade. Love you, sis. Bye. See you next week. Yes. Peace out. All right, y'all.